and in the movie he asks why don't people dress up as superheroes and there was something about that statement that really spoke to me it was like a, an epiphany I had that little light bulb over my head Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grime America Show. Uh, we're going to be chatting with a real-life superhero a little bit later. The Urban Avenger, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And his handler. <laughs> Nadia. Nadia. <laughs> Is she his handler? No, I don't think so. Oh, she's just the writer of the book. Yeah, she's just the... Uh, it was a great chat, though. The, oh, yeah. superb. Yeah. Superb. Actually, we did it on YouTube, too, so it, it'll be there on video. <clears throat> There's a video out there somewhere, yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, you got their electronic jacket, Graham, over here. It is fucking, cold today, cold around it is here. Fucking freezing, fucking cold. It's even colder up where Failed is. He was minus fucking 38 or something this morning. We were only like minus 27. Yeah, we actually do have it pretty good here as far as Canada goes. Yeah, except for the minus 27. That's that's but that's better than the rest of Canada. It feels like BC, minus thirty six. Actually, yeah, my hometown right now is like minus forty. Don't tell me the feels like thing. My girlfriend yeah. always does that too. Okay, it's not the wind chill counts, bro. The wind. That's because you're is from not the consistent. fucking. Consistent. That's because you're from this fucking. The wind mountains. is coming and that's going. That's because you're a city boy. Us fucking prairie town folk. There's wind chill, bro. And the counts. wind is subjective, and the chill from it is. The wind subjective. is not fucking subjective. Of course, it's. I, I it's might a feel chill less than you. No, I might feel less than you. What if I'm breathing no, like wind. Wim Hof, then the wind's not even going to bother me. So well, how can so, it feel so like off. anything? Maybe the temperature's even different if you're Wim Hof. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point. Oh, Wim Hof. The temperature's a little easier to measure. I mean, I know you can measure wind chill scientifically, so I'm not saying that. But so that's the wind what the feels very, like is. But it's fucking all over the place. Depends on if you're protected, what you're wearing, what your constitution's like. Your constitution? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's cold as fuck. <laughs> anyway, like... we'll do the experiment because the garage is not heated. It's cold as fuck. Oh, yeah. We were talking about this today. About... Well, I'll stand in the garage. We'll wear our fucking short shorts. No shirts. Okay. Wife beaters. Can you still call them wife beaters? Don't, I don't know. No, that's no. terrible. Well, what Jesus. are we going to, what do we call them then? Tank tops. Tank tops. We're wearing why, tank why tops. Why would you even wear a tank top? Okay. We'll go to no shirts. Now. You got to get hosed down first because you've got your little bulkier than me. So we got to spray you down to bring it back up to, so we can either hose you down or you can start a little earlier or something. I don't know. You better oil them up too. We'll figure out a way to make it even because you're a little thicker than I am. What, you think I'm going to last long? I have more like protection? Yeah, that's right. More constitution? More constitution. <laughs> Word of the week. <laughs> Bing. Put it in the newsletter. Um. <coughs> You forgot to say and and the gram and and as always and as always. Yeah, I called you electronic shirt. Oh, well, you kind of did. Yeah, you have your shirt on in the igloo. It's probably causing some mic interference. Yeah. <laughs> so for people who don't understand what a battery heated coat is, neither did I up until about a year ago. Yeah. It's a new thing. It's made by Milwaukee. Let me see the battery out of no, that. No, don't. Thing. If you start name naming oh, brands, yeah. Whoa, and, oh yeah, sorry, no <clears> no affiliation. <throat> yeah, no affiliation. <laughs> Anyway, it's got a little battery pack in the back, and it generates heat. That'll be the next thing, eh? is is corporate corporate sponsorship will be tricking like podcasters will be tricking people into, <laughs> into like James was trying to get us to uh, trick people. Yeah, it's like, he's like he's handling know, again. Like you could talk about the squatty potty. <laughs> we talk about the squatty <laughs> just, potty all the time, and they don't even pay us. <laughs> they wouldn't even give us a fucking interview. <laughs> and we asked them. <laughs> We asked them, and they said yes, and then when they, it's like they took one look at the show, and then when I started messaging them, they just wouldn't respond. I'm like, nope. Really? Is there any such thing as bad press? I don't think so. Anyway, Merry Christmas, motherfucker. Maybe they motherfucker. can't keep up on production already. Yeah, Merry Christmas. They can't keep up on Squatty Potty production? Then you well, buy another fucking die, man. There was like, only a honestly, couple in Canadian Tire when I went and bought If you mine. can't keep up with Squatty Potty production, you've got fucking problems. Buy another mold. You buy another machine that's the size of this table well, well, and put it beside pretty, the other you know, machine that's knows, the size man? of this table. Who knows? Maybe they maybe they're ramped up already. There are already a lot of people pooping. I s I I'll usually send a picture of my squatty potty when I'm pooping. Oh, and sometimes I just send the picture where? 
to the di- to the chats. <laughs> this is nice. So, <laughs> this is really going to get more people in the chats. Oh, I usually, I usually chats. send a picture of my body. So now we're restoring the entire computer. <laughs> By the looks of it. It's just in time for the Fandango. Anyway. And then I'll get like, bing, 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 bing. Like four squatty potty picks. Wow. We should probably start a new a new room. Yeah, I'd rather have a different chat thread for that. You should probably stop talking about Squatty Potty if you're not getting paid. We can hope. We just want an interview. This episode is brought to you by Snow. snow. (laughs) Fucking lots of... Minus 40. It's not snow so much. It's just cold as fuck. It's hard to get used to that shit. Blew up the igloo today. No power. It was so cold. There was no power for a bit. There's a big fucking to-do around here. Is that because you put it plugged in the ancient heater? I plugged in that old heater and plugged it in this <laughs> 8.6 gigawatt heater. Even after you got this place rewired? It how does blew in the house. It blew the house? It blew the breaker that feeds the garage. Huh. So, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. How was your Christmas you spent on the highway? I know you spent yeah, your good. Christmas Eve playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> that was good, yeah. 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 Who else? It was you, Grimstick, and Adam, if uh, I recall? It was a whole bunch of us, yeah. On Christmas Eve? I think so, yeah. Was it Christmas Eve? Yeah. I, I'm getting confused. Yeah. Mm, good times. GTs. GTs. Did you see Santa? No. No? Did you? I thought I heard him, but I didn't see him. Mm. We tracked him for a while. Maybe you're just hallucinating on your Christmas present. I fell asleep. Could be. It was a good Christmas present. It's a good Christmas present. Make shout out to Mac. I'm stoned on his weed right now, actually, on a moon rock. Are you taking fucking pictures wanna, of me again, you, you motherfucker? Should we, yeah. uh, enough of the F bombs in this intro. Should we read the feet, uh, the letter that came with our Christmas present from Mac? Yeah, yeah. Do so it. this is, uh, there's, there is a P.O. box on the, uh, contact, grammarica.ca slash dot what, CA slash contact. I'll play the jingle after you read it. Short and sweet show synchros X forty two. What is that? What does that mean? X forty two. So show synchros. <laughs> Grambo. The first time I listened to the psilocybin episode, I was driving to work in L A. And as you were recounting your John twelve Hawk synchro, I was waiting to turn onto the freeway. That's the on ramp. Just as you said, so I got home and I looked it up, and it was a red tailed hawk. That's the time count fourteen. Minutes exactly. A massive specimen of the very same alighted on a branch hanging over the road. The light changed and it stared me down until I passed and turned onto the on wrap. Shivers from my head to my calves. That's rule number 62. Okay. And uh, that's the, the rest of us for you, Darren. D Ron, episode 204 had just dropped. I'm listening in the dispensary, a short walk from my house. I get home and pop the bag as you riff on replicators, saying, Give me some fucking blue dream with a side of fucking Kush for later. <laughs> Time code 833. In my bag, blue dream, and OG Kush. Huh. You get to rate it. That's good, that one, that actually. Is pretty yeah, good. That's pretty good, yeah. And especially because it has to do with weed, that makes it even better. Oh, come on. Bonus that's points. an extra point four two. That's two point four two. That's point four. Like no, because it has to do yeah. with the show, not because of that. It's got to get a point eight four. It's a point four. four two for the so show or a point four two for weed. Yeah. So it's a point eight four some whatever. Plus yeah. he had a synchro with Mike Hawk episode. Yeah. Fucking hawks all over the place. Hawk, <laughs> hawk, hawk. I can't find the uh well, I got some more feedback here okay, while, while you're going. waiting. Darren, do you have a tomahawk? Jesus Christ, that's racist. I'm still trying to get <laughs> I'm still trying to get my emails uh, sort, sorted out here. But uh, let's see, how do I do this one here? When did tomahawks become racist? I don't understand anymore. It's just um, it's just pop culture, buddy. I'm lost. Yeah, you just, 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 you're appropriating I'm culture. I'm scared to say anything anymore. So, uh, you have the right to remain silent still. That's the only fucking right you got left. Get out a pen and paper and write this down. Or a pencil. Or a pencil. Why don't you send some physical mail to the Grimerica <laughs> Show? Physical. At P.O. Box 16033. Next line. Uh-huh. 
100-815, comma, 17th Avenue, SW. Next line. Calgary, Alberta. Next line. Canada. Next line. T2T space, 5H7. That's the P.O. box. You send Darren some dirty socks Cause he's got a dirty sock fetish uh -huh. Why socks. don't you send Graham some Gold bowling cause he's got a gold bowling fetish uh -huh. Send him some gold Send him some gold Send him some gold in the P.O. box A P.O. box P.O. box A gift physical A gift physical A gift physical Everybody loves to get physical And get physical oh. oh my god Oh Felix <laughs> Oh Felix <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to him today. So this is a great job, Synchronicity, Lucid Dreaming, Trip Report. Howdy, fellas. Want to say how awesome you guys are with the quality of your podcast. Not the sound quality, obviously, but the content, interviews, and the line of questioning. Even though you seem like you really... Wait a second. What does he mean, not the sound quality? Yeah, because it's, cause it's already assumed to be top quality. That's okay. what I meant. Yeah. Okay, let's Jesus, hope. I, I think your voice other, sounds yeah, beautiful. I took that off the other way. No. I, I just <laughs> made your... Okay, obviously your sound sucks. <laughs> no, no, no. You're saying it's obvious. It does, doesn't even have to mention it. Does Graham sound less thin now? Oh, my God. Can I finish Be reading this less, thing? Less effeminate? Yeah. I think he and, sounds nice and bassy today. He's like beefcakey. And the line of questioning, even though you seem like you rarely prepare for the chats... <laughs> That was a compliment because it seems like you two are in a perpetual surplus, surplus, surplu oh my God. Superfluous? Yeah. Flow state of co-hosting symbiosis and rarely leave dead air. First heard you boys on the tinfoil hat and liked what you were spewing about fringeworthy topics. That's a mashup between fringe and cringeworthy. So I gave Grimerica a try. Needless to say, I was satisfied. I started on 258 when it came out. Now I'm on 189. Figured I'd give you everything in an email to make it condense somewhat. First is my synchro. Pretty insignificant. I hope, at least. On my five-hour commute from work, I was binging Grimerica, and I took a quick break to read an article about Saturn's black cube. Lo and behold, after I was done reading, I look up from the back seat of the work van, and in the center of my vision, I see an apartment building named Blackstone. Felt a bit strange. Second is the lucid dream. Slightly less insignificant. It was my first and only ever. I used the method of counting my fingers at random points in the day to remind myself I'm awake. Do you remember when I was going around, Darren? Just flicking light switches. <laughs> <laughs> Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? <laughs> Hitting door, door frames. And <laughs> it's amazing. I never got fired. <laughs> I think Grant's back on the drugs, man. <laughs> hey, just making sure I'm not dreaming. Am I dreaming? That hey, it works though. Let, let's let's dreaming. see. So, so he was uh, he was counting his fingers at random points in the day to remind himself he's awake. I was I was dreaming. I was at a gas station convenience store, and I somehow remembered what I had practiced and counted my fingers, and realized I was in a reverie. After the sudden realization, I proceeded to walk around freely. Nothing special or freaky. Just walked around checking out all the women's butts. Can you blame me? Don't got much else to do while sleeping. <clears throat> so that was a pretty inconsequential. Yeah, I can't rate those. Lucid dream. Just, no, it's, okay. no, the Here synchro come. I can't rate. Okay. Third is my trip report. Lately, I've been microdosing on psilocybin and smoking weed. But when I finally was running low on cash, I just decided to eat a whole handful and make a journey out of it. It was definitely a learning experience, as it always seems to be, when receiving the extremely foreign sacrament and nothing I can ever expound on in a single email. Hopefully I can chat with you guys on the podcast or get you to do a quick interview for my blog that you've inspired me to do. Keep up the good work. Due to a very lucrative Christmas, I will be pledging a lump sum to you in the very near future. As well, I will steal my brother's iPhone and leave a five-star review. <laughs> But a one-word comment because I've used too many words in this email. All right. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Mr. Stout. Beep, beep. Thank you very much. That was a good email. I got another little... I might as well just do it reading. I got a little other one here, too. A little other one? You got yeah, a little, little, other, little one. other one? Yeah. Graham Jr. Hey, what are you going to rate that weed one? You didn't rate it. Yeah, he gave it a 7.42. It's no 7.84, then. Sure. Hey, bud, been working my way through the back catalog and just heard 232, and the whole time 
I could only think of the episode of South Park where they tried to get an elephant and a pig drunk so they would breed. <laughs> you guys crack me up and become a daily lesson since my house burned out to a shell. Once all this mess is taken care of, I plan on hitting the donation and make up for my slacking. Until I get caught up, tell Stony Baloney, I said that you guys are the best. Keep the jingles coming and the music chill and do not stop what you guys are doing. That was from Dan Danger. I got a jingle for you. I accidentally hit two buttons at once. So that was <laughs> two jingle mashup. You know what I almost did? Actually, I might still do later tonight. On Christmas, I was going to release a ma- just a jingle compilation of all the jingles. I think it would run about a half an hour almost. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> might do it, yeah. Post them on uh, the site so people can make ringtones out of them. Fuck that. Okay, I might as well stick down this. So this is coming from Instagram. Yeah, okay, how do I do that? Maybe you know what I'll do that? I'll post them on the site for ringtones in the fucking member section. Yeah. Okay. We don't have a member so, section. Well, on the support page, the black budget page. Black budget? What do you, what do you mean? Yeah, you can post oh, the ringtones. That's like where that. the videos are for Leopardy, which still seems a little offensive to me, but... It's leopard, like a great cat. Like Def is Leopard. It? Yeah. I'm, like I'm leopard. not convinced exactly. that it is. Well, just, just <laughs> pretend it is. Okay. <laughs> we um, went through a whole naming <laughs> process and nothing was getting through to them, so we stuck with Leopardy. Really? Yeah, yeah. and Tomahawks are How racist. come I wasn't involved in the naming process? <laughs> I don't know, you were, you were oh, was that the, the day I went on, that, day? went on the thing that had like 78 new fucking... So we're talking about the perpetual chats, greatamerica.ca slash chats. It's in the show notes as well. And And I do have, I do have one more social media feedback here from Think Not. He's a friend of the show. Bingo, bingo, social media jingle. Don't forget to rate, comment, and or subscribe to the crowd. Shouldn't have said well, social is, media. Actually, this is feedback from uh, our V. Henry um, vaccination podcast. And some think not. A, ver- army, a army fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're in a nasty mood today. Sorry. A fascinating and interesting podcast. V. Henry tells us much in regarding the complicity of big pharma. And withholding the decimating effects of the chemicals and heavy metals that are deliberately added to vaccines, they know the long and short-term detrimental effects their products have on us, yet they have protected themselves from legal responsibility through intensive lobbying. V explains much regarding the hidden hand of Big Pharma and much, much more besides. Darren's own knowledge on the subject has come a long way since he started his own personal investigation into the dangers of vaccination. Listeners could well benefit from the information contained in this eye-opening podcast. It is because of great podcasts like this that makes me proud to be a card-carrying donator to Grey America. I can't wait to see what rabbit hole Darren and Graham takes down next. Long live Grey America. It's going to be superhero rabbit Thanks, hole. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Try not to get yourself stabbed out there. <laughs> as long as we're doing the social media jangle, I'll run through a couple of YouTube comments. What do we got here? Uh, I would jump back to, I'm a newbie to the podcast, enjoying it very much. You will hear from me in the future, no doubt, eh? And that's from Original Larry. Uh, from our buddy Steve Burzen, S-T-V-B-R-S-N, he comments on most videos. Ha, ah, the day he meditated on the highway median and measured his brain waves was my birthday. I wonder what he was doing at 11.25 in the morning. Probably rock climbing. <laughs> That's what he was doing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what do we got? Uh, number 259. Great show and most excellent artwork. Love the pre-show jabber. Best wishes for 2018. And he got corrected. The correct term is jibba jabba. What else do we got? Uh, thank you. Uh, number 257. Thank you, Great America. What inspiration and group introspection happening. Love and light for connecting us with Kristen Skelton and Bud Funder. 
We got on, uh, we got a couple here on number 259, which is a futurist episode, which I had my own doubts about. But uh, we got um, the Kashido Oblate Earth. I like Grames for the butler. <laughs> Combination of James and Graham. That's perfect. Grames. Grames. Drinking cigarettes is a great thing. That's what my D and D character is going to. I have called. a question. Who does the artwork? So clean. Is it done with Illustrator? I don't know the answer to that question, but maybe Nap could go to episode two fifty nine and respond to Graffiti Maniac. Yeah, I think he's an Adobe guy when I talk to him. But. And we got from John Boat. Trump is a maniac. I love Fidel Castro. Two quotes from Mister Badminton. If that is your view of the present, I'm not buying your views of the future. <laughs> and we actually, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point, actually. Here we have a, a comment on number 258 with Lionel, which was a great chat. I didn't think I was going to like this show, but like many other episodes, I was surprised at how good it was. Which I will mention for a lot of people, because some people only listen to the intros or skip a lot of in- interviews. A lot of people listen to the ones that they don't think they're going to like, and they end up liking them. So yeah, well, just, you know what you can do, too? You can check out the tags in the bottom of the show notes, and that kind of gives you an idea of, there's like 30 or so interesting words of topics that we talk about And validate Graham's existence of the show notes and, a little bit at the same time. Yeah, or, or, or the, the actual app. description and the links are also Especially now because the website doesn't let you put the links in it. Uh, the, the, what? Yeah, I can still put them in Libsyn, but not in WordPress. If you use the app, you can search in the app for keywords. Yeah, we talked about this already. Yeah. yeah. Episode 142 is the great fortune cookie gag. No. Okay, number 259. Oh my God, I just emailed you guys something totally adjacent to that profound UFO code. Praise synchronicity. Holy shit. Shit, sorry, Darren. I sent it to you first, but sent it to Graham as the law of the land demands. <laughs> Enjoy, gents. Dope guest. Fascinating. Terrifying. Tech, mm, great politics all around. Which one was that? We for? ain't ready for anarchy. That's on number two fifty nine, and that's from uh, Ronald Fakali. You have an email from him or something? Yeah. On number one seventy nine, Carmen Bolter. There wouldn't. There was never a matriarchy. This is a total misconception because there is a huge factor missing in the analysis, namely the great conjunction of Venus, Mars, and so, holy cow. And Saturn, Venus arriving in our solar system is a common. Vilikovsky revived this information. It was already known to the Hellenistic historians, and the Thunderbolts project are continuing it. Our solar system was not stable or predictable back in antiquity, and there is irrefutable evidence of this conjunction which displaced what is once known as the pole star, Saturn. It is recorded in the pyramid-slash-coffin texts in Indian texts such as the Maharabhata, Hopi legend, Scandinavian myth, comma, central, oops, central European myth, African myth, <laughs> Aboriginal, Mesoamerican, etc., etc. The interpretations of fertility worship, matriarchy, and such are merely conjectures in the absence of proper translation and missing knowledge. From the Black Eyed Kids, I have heard that the Black Eyed Kids are the spirits of illegitimate children who are unwanted and unloved. Just because they have black eyes? Yeah. Did, did, did they, they say your spirits? And steal your soul. Did they say spirits are the kids or the kids themselves? No, the spirits. Oh, wow. I think they're aliens. Mm. Of course you do. Uh, okay. On the radionic ships, which was just a live broadcast, hasn't actually come out as an episode yet, we got, oh my God, <laughs> this was a gem. <laughs> we got, send this puppy straight away to the Museum of Broadcasting. <laughs> Randall Carson episode. This is, uh, that's a big... Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, for that. um, uh, what's the Feliz Navidad remix? Now you got to find that. Okay, I think that. Oh, thank you for playing my Christmas jam. I hope you're keeping toasty in the igloo. Okay, uh, that's it. Right on, buddy. If toast means frosty and frozen, then yeah, <laughs> totally. It's warming up with you guys in here. You guys should wrestle. It's the TV. Oh, yeah, it is a TV. The TV is heating up the whole igloo. Until the fucking power goes out. Anyway, what else you got? Support the show. I got a UFO quote. Support. Uh, can we use a C-SETI? 
No, just, you know, what happened to the other jingles? Which one do you want? Well, see, so he said he is about UFOs, so yeah, that counts. Totally. No, no, no. Yeah, it qualifies. I don't want to trigger her. Profound UFO quote of the week. I just storm out of here halfway through the fandango. He's just going to have to get used to that This song. is the UFO quote of the week. <laughs> He's having trouble coming around to the... We were asking the Americans, are you operating a prototype aircraft in our <laughs> airspace? That, of course, was nonsense. You simply would not do that from a diplomatic and political point of view. It would undermine the entire structure of NATO if you were putting things through someone else's airspace, particularly a close ally without seeking the proper diplomatic clearance. But we had to ask. And the Americans, having had similar reports, I guess, since the Hudson Valley wave, that was New York State in the mid-1980s, have been quietly asking us if we had some large, triangular-shaped object that could go from zero to Mach 5 in a second. Our response was that we wished we did. This was the bizarre situation, that we were chasing the Americans and the Americans were chasing us. The official line from the Ministry of Defense is, yes, this happened. No, we don't know what it is, but we say that it is of no defense significance. How can it possibly be of no defense significance when your best jet is left for standing by a UFO? And again, how can it be of no defense significance when your Air Force region is routinely penetrated by structured craft? That's what she said. That's from Nick Pope, head of the UFO desk at the Secretariat 2-A, British British Ministry of Defense from 1991 to 1994. There you have it, Nick yeah. Pope. He quotes a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's a lot. There's a lot of quotes from him. That's yeah. a good. That's a good quote, though. That's an awesome quote. I like it. One of my favorites. Can't believe I left it for so long. No Especially kidding. now that uh, all this other stuff came out about UFOs. Mr. You should have Nick Pope on. We did. They did. They did? Yeah. What up was that? I'll have well, to search. Going yeah. back. Fuck. Yeah, going back. How does the fucking handler just slowly roping into doing more work around here? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get another back catalog, bro. So when people ask questions, you know. I forget all the ones I listen to. Me I've too. listened to them all. I don't remember either. It's I Google it. Oh, the Rendlesham Forest with Nick Pope. Oh, oh did yeah. Did you find that in the app? Yeah. So it's app number, it's wow, from 20, so that is a good way to June 28th, 2014, episode number, oh, you're not numbering these ones? No, that was before the yeah, start it's numbering. it's not numbered. We didn't start numbering them until 101. Did, so we, you have, can did we have Nick Pope on that long ago then, before 100? With the other Rendlesham dude. June, but that June was 28th, no. 2014. What? 2014? Yeah. Three and a half years ago. Yeah. Oh, that was a while ago. Uh, by the way, guys, check out the link in the show notes. Check out the uh, GoFundMe for Trinity. Oh yeah, for cancer treatment that as well. Yeah, I think we got through to a you know a few people. Yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. like we got through to seven or eighty anyway. Drummed up a few hundred bucks. Uh, so let's see if we can't get a few more people drummed up this week. A few more people head over, click on that link. That's our friend, a good friend of the show. His, good friend uh, of the show, yeah. Garrett. Yeah, we know everything's legit. Um. And it's for some cancer treatment for his niece, right? That's right. So yeah. check that out if you can. The link's in the show notes. And then head over to grimerica.ca slash support and sign up for a buck a month, two bucks a month, five bucks a month, whatever you can. We do have a couple of people that sign up for the 30 bucks a month. I think one. Most popular is three right now. Yeah. So sign up for three bucks a month. That's We're a trying to one. get over 1% of uh, our listenership to, right to about, support the show. We're right at about three-fourths of 1%. So, and you get the black budget feed, that would be and you get the black budget seven feed. Five, point seven five. Most of our audience is American; they'll get the reference. Um, and you get the black budget feed, which has the the, the leopardy episode in there, which just came out. Oh yeah, which we just is did a fucking yeah. hoot. Yeah, that was against cruising with steak. We fucking steamrolled cruising with steak. Actually, they came back in the end, but then we just shut them down. And then we just shut them down, and then they <laughs> bitched and moaned. I think they're still complaining in the chats. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Nobody spelled anything right, I noticed. I don't think anybody no, got the spelling. No, the spelling was one. terrible. I thought we'd all yeah. do good in the spelling. It's terrible. Yeah. You can't write the word we down. Get, oh we didn't God. get one spelling right. Thank God for autocorrect. Oh, no, that's not right. Grim, Grim got fucking mannequin. Oh, yeah. Well, he would, he would get <laughs> he would, that one right. He's always ordering mannequins. <laughs> 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 he would have been good for mannequin and pocket pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and fleshlight. <laughs> 
who are anyway, not sponsors of the Grand America Show. Who are not sponsors. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to use brand names there. Sorry. I didn't know they were brand names, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just like a light bulb, you know, like <laughs> just a standard. Is a brand name too? Probably, yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. The other one is. He's backing the off. Other the other one is. Yeah. <laughs> he's backing <laughs> off big time. <laughs> he's got a whole, he's got a whole dresser, just a sort of. Dresser <laughs> full of flashlights. <laughs> All different colors, shapes, yeah. sizes. Yeah. Tightnesses. Yeah. How does that work then? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, do you name them? Yeah. No, I don't think so. No? No. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right, guys, support the show if you can. Gramerica.ca slash support. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways in the show notes. You can support the show for free. Uh, we just steamed right through Christmas. Yeah, send, send emails and stuff, stories. Uh, yeah, spam gram. G-R-A-H-A-M at Gramerica.com. Most of all, rate the show, share the show. Instagram. Share the show, review Dan's the on show. Twitter. I'm on the Twitter for now. Yeah. One day we'll pull a plug on this. Fucking social media overlords. Really? What do you like mean? To. Just get off it, you mean? Yeah. Really? Once we hit a, I think one day we'll hit a point where we're self-sustainable and we just don't. No, but everybody We does don't it. need to. I was listening to some more we mainstream podcasts of some really interesting people yeah, but, and they're they're using ads. Yeah, how can you be an like internet? I was listening to Russell Brand's podcast and he, he has ads in it. Oh, it does? Yeah. That's not just, cool. I know, it's weird, eh? Rogan's making millions off his ads. Yeah. You'd see what the draw is. Yeah. Instead, we make pennies. <laughs> <laughs> you make tens. I'd still rather. I don't, I don't like that. Instead, we still can't have both heaters plugged in at once. No. <laughs> Took us a half an hour Psycho. to fix it. At least the TV gets hot. That's so right. That it's going to be a bitch in the winter. It's yeah. nice to have that That's radiating okay. television right beside my brain. That's what you get from. Uh, uh, I wonder I can't sleep. You should wear a helmet in here, man. You really should. There's a so. lot of shit flying around. Tin foil. Way. Get the tin foil. We, we could be part of an experiment. What? Just like what, what happens to your brain when you're in a Faraday cage yeah. with a bunch of electronics. I'm going to bring my Geiger counter to the igloo next yeah. week. We yeah. should bring some. We should Don't bring, bring some... any counters in yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to know. Don't want to know. Ig Ignorance is bus. Plus, we don't want to dissuade any guests, local guests from coming by. You know, <laughs> no, I, heard you that, I heard that place is a. Uh, mm. Just have popcorn <laughs> popping on the fucking desk. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, yeah, enjoy the chat. This is this is a uh, fun this chat. Really fun. Yeah. Yeah. You might be a little spooked or a little turned off. Spooked. What? A lot of people are gonna see real life superhero. Be like, eh. I That's don't not think spooked. So. Spooked mm -hmm. is like when you're scared. Okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> I'm a little spooked now. Oh my god. Anyway, oh, no. uh, do take a listen. It's a good one. It's a fun one. A lot of people commented on the YouTube that they didn't think it was going to be great. It turned out to be a, a real fun one. You guys should enjoy it. So enjoy the chat. And uh, yeah, that's it. This will be a fun one. Tonight we've got Nadia Fazani, and uh, she's an investigative reporter, investigative journalist, actually, and a real-life superhero with us, Urban Avenger. Um, Nadia's been interviewing all kinds of people, uh, musicians, secret agents, bounty hunters, and now she's hit the superhero circuit. So we're in really excited to chat with you guys about Nadia's work and uh, and to hear about Urban Avenger's you know, like right, right from the streets and right from this real life superhero. So, welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. 
Thanks. Nadia, can you hear me okay? I can. So, Nadia, let's start with you. And before we get into, like, uh, you know, the actual listening to Urban Avenger there, what uh, what got you into the, the superhero part from your other work, like talking about bounty hunters and secret agents and all that? How did you end up uh, finding these guys and, and uh, writing about them? I have been interviewing serial killers and writing about them and studying them for a few, a few years. And it was very negative, very dark, of course, as you can imagine. So I needed a subject that was a little more positive. And so when I first heard of a real life superhero, I didn't know if it was a joke, if it was someone trying to be a superhero or what it was, in fact. So I did a little bit of research and I met a few of them and I, I, I thought they were amazing people. And I figured that at least this time, if I were to cover the superheroes, it would be a more positive topic. And it sure was. There is negative in the world of superheroes, for example, as why they do what they do. But um, in general, it was a very positive experience. Nice. So what do you mean by... Um by negative as far as what they do, what they do. Like there's, because there's different reasons of why they all go out there and do that. Exactly. So most people won't just decide to go out on the street and risk their lives to save others. So there's usually a reason behind it. For example, if someone was a victim of any type of crime or witnessed any type of crime and the event affected them, then they want to do whatever they can to help others not to go through the same trauma. So that that's basically what most of them are going through. They've been tr- through traumatic events or they've done things that they regret or uh, things like that. And so now they want to go back out there and save people they can save. Wow. So what was it like when you first started getting into this and, and, and finding these people? Did How long was that process and did it surprise you at how, how prevalent it was out there? Yeah, so it took me about two and a half years. Um, I met most of them online first, got to discover, you know, who they were, uh, who I should interview, who's not really a real life superhero, because a lot of people try to uh, look like superheroes. You know, they say, I patrol, I do this, I do that. But in reality, they don't. So Urban Avenger here, I saw that he was really patrolling with his team. I've been following him for many years. So I know he's real. So it took a lot of a time to get to know them, um, to ask questions about others and, you know, get to know the community in general. And I decided to patrol with the ones I actually believed in. So I know, like I said, there are some people who say I'm a real life superhero, but they're not really a superhero. So I really paid attention to who I should patrol with. And I chose the one that I really believed in. Is there is there a certain type of person or character that that take this on that really like out of the real serious ones? Um, most of them, like I said, have gone through traumatic events, um, and so that's why they do it. Mo- so I would say that that's the common factor between them. Hmm. So, so are you, are they all connected? Is there a connection or a network of of these people out there doing that? Yes, there's the community of real life superheroes and they're very popular on Facebook, which is a little funny because when I started doing my research, um, almost there was almost no superhero online, uh, but thankfully they showed up <laughs> and so it made my life a lot easier. So yes, they do communicate uh, online and they have uh, chat rooms, private chat rooms and uh, community websites where they, uh, they communicate together. Yeah. So, so Urban, can I call you Urban? Yes, please. <laughs> so what was it like meeting Nadia? And, and you, apparently you took her out for some patrols and all that. Can you explain that experience a bit? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it was just a pretty standard uh, night for me. Uh, we went out. I was with a team at the time called the Extreme Justice League. And we, uh, you know, we just took her out for a night out on the town in, in, in downtown San Diego, where it's kind of like the, um, the club district, lots of drinking, lots of partying, lots of, um, you know, people getting a little, uh, out of control sometimes. Uh, and, you know, we just, uh, we went to one of those, uh, really 
really quaint hotels and sat in their lobby and had a nice chat and talked for a few hours about our life experiences and, you know, what made us who we are, basically. How many of you were in that Extreme Justice League? At the time, uh, maybe about a dozen. Wow, really? Yeah, the team was pretty big, and, and it fluctuates, you know, every year. So people come and go and things like that. I'm not, I'm not with the team anymore myself, but, um, yeah, they're still pretty active, and they, um, I think they're about maybe six or seven people right now that are consistently patrolling. I, I don't really know off the top of my head. So how long have you been doing it for? I've been doing it since July of 2010. So oh. over seven and a half years. What? Uh, so what's your like origin story? <laughs> well, I, it's actually pretty simple. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like Nadia said, yeah, you know, I have had some um, experiences in the past, which kind of, I guess, made me the person I am today. Uh, I've had like my car broken into. I've had, you know, people um, assault me on the street. Uh, you know, and uh, and and. I've never wanted to be the victim, but at the same time, like, you know, you're not always capable of defending yourself. And I guess that's always just kind of been a part of who I am because I've always tried to help other people. And, um, back in 2010, uh, Kick-Ass had just come out in theaters and I went and saw it with my friend and in the movie, he asks, why don't people dress up as superheroes? And there was something about that statement that really spoke to me. It was like a, an epiphany. I had that little light bulb over my head. And I thought, yeah, why the hell not? Why, why don't I dress up as a superhero and I go and help people? That would be so amazing. And so I went home and I started doing research and I learned about real life superheroes and I found people like Mr. Extreme and, and Shadowhair and Cincinnati and then the New York Initiative and all these people it was like it was like discovering like a whole new world of comic books it was like reading x-men for the first time like i didn't know that these types of people existed and it completely blew my mind so i had to become a superhero myself actually well, i didn't know that it existed until graham told me that he booked this interview <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, it is, it is a surprise that it's out there, really, that you haven't heard more about it. It's almost like the media is kind of silent about it. I mean... Well, I think it's... I mean, it's probably... Is there, Do you know of anyone doing this kind of thing in Canada? I feel like you can still get away with that kind of thing in the States, but in Canada, they're going to be like, nope. I you have know? a friend who lives in Ontario. And one of the most popular uh, real-life superhero is from Vancouver, Thanatos. Oh, oh really? I What's his name? Thanatos. <laughs> that's funny. Well, that's probably the only place you can be year round. Anyways, you'd have to, you know, you'd have to have like kind of a rain suit going on, but like me and urban, were talking about before we started recording up in Calgary, you'd have to have some long johns. And like he was saying, like bulletproof, a bulletproof jacket is pretty warm, but I mean, you must get pretty hot in San Diego. Yes. I'm dying right now. Actually. And I'm just sitting in my bedroom. <laughs> So, well, so, I think the crime rate naturally goes down when it's minus 40. Yeah, so you don't have to worry. You yeah, can just probably. do it in your car. <laughs> Same thing when it rains. People don't like being out in the rain any more than they do the cold. So, man, I have, I have so many so questions. Do you just, so are you just solo when you go out on your average night? Do you do that solo or do you guys go out in a group? Usually it's better to go out in a group. I, I've gone out solo many times and it's almost never a good thing. No, I could see that. Otherwise, you just uh, you could get jumped, right? Yeah, yeah, very easily. There was um, one time when I first started, I was kind of cocky, and I wanted to go out and really prove myself and pr prove to myself that I could really be a superhero. That I could go out and do this. And I, I patrolled this park that was really dimly lit, and I'm and I'm coming up towards the entrance, and you could see these three guys step out from the shadows. It was like something out of a movie into this into the streetlight. And I'm just like, ah, oh, crap, I'm by myself, and there's these three dudes stepping out, and they're confronting me, what am I going to do? And it turns out they were like some kind of private security or something, and we actually just wound up chatting for like 10 minutes. But it could have easily turned into a very bad situation. Yeah. Man, I, I do have a lot of questions. And Nadia, if, if I ask some of these general questions, you can feel free to jump in as well. Sure. I don't want to leave you out of this, but it's, it's great having you both on. Um, so. 
so what about your like you know your fighting ability and your skill set and all that? I mean, do you, are you do you have to do you have to have? I mean, obviously you have to have a certain amount of top. Like I couldn't go out there and and uh, training. What level of training? Yeah. Well, I do have some martial arts experience. I've got about six or seven years of Chinese Kempo, um, which is probably one of the more violent and brutal martial arts out there, right up with um, Krav Maga. It's very, very efficient, and uh, we learn to break a lot of bones. Right. So it's a lot of arm breaks and, and chops to the throat and breaking the nose and going for the soft spots on the face, things like that. Um, it's not like a lot of, like, kicking and jumping it's it's mostly punches and and pokes and and you know gouging your eyes out and stuff like that and Good for um, multiple opponents yes yes it is and uh but more importantly than martial arts training i think is also de-escalation training because a lot, a lot of times and not every time but most of the time uh, fights can be actually completely avoided if you just know how to talk to people and you can talk them down or maybe even just threaten them a little bit with your stun gun because that works too. Yeah. So, did you ever stun yourself? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, bet, uh, I couldn't resist. As soon as I got a stun gun, I'd be like, yep. <laughs> well, the best thing to do is to stand up and then hit yourself on the thigh with it. Well, then you can get used to it, right? Like, do you do you, do you do it so that if someone hits you with a stun, you can kind of keep going? Yes, yeah. You, you get used to the pain, and you know exactly what to expect, and also it helps you determine how long you can actually hit them with it for, True. too. So, so you may not have to just keep stunning them until they pass out. So you guys are talking about real stun gun? Like... Yeah. Yeah, you can't get you them in Canada. I don't, I don't think you can buy them in Canada. I think they're illegal. They, they well, should be fine. Fine. Yeah. They made me train with them. I, I can't remember, Urban, if you were with us, but uh, they trained me. And the next day I had bruises and everything, which is cool because I also do Krav Maga and I've done Kenpo Karate, Urban, by the way. Wow. Uh, so so that, that, was, that was really fun. They were teaching me. Um, that was really strange because they taught me what to do in case of a shooting. And, and so I was not used to that, of course, right? I'm from Montreal, you know. So... They taught me like how to get on the floor very quickly, what to do, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not joking. Two days later, I was patrolling in Seattle with Phoenix Jones and we got in the middle of a shooting. It was New oh Year's Oh my Eve. God. Yeah. Jeez. And I did, I did exactly what they taught me to do. <laughs> and it worked. Yes, it did. It so did. It what, was mainly, like I said, to jump on the floor and, you know, like go protect yourself behind a car and things like that. So, so what, what did what happened in that shooting? Did Phoenix, what did Phoenix do? Well, when it started, we just froze and then we, you know, got on the floor, went behind cars and then we tried to see where it was coming from. And it was coming from behind a uh, paramedic uh, truck and ambulance. So. An ambulance or a fire truck, one or the other. It wasn't a big fire truck if it was. But anyway, there is a video on YouTube um, where we can see part of the shooting. So when it started to calm down, when the shooter was shooting less, then we all got up and we went behind the truck to see where he was coming from. And then he started running. The police arrived. They started running after him. The superheroes took another route to get him caught in between. He was in an alley and the police arrested him. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that brings up a whole bunch of other questions. So do you guys have relationship with the local police force and do you work with them or are you sort of, you know, do you have to keep stealthy and anonymous to the, the local law enforcement as well? Yeah, you know, I consider us pretty lucky down here in San Diego because well, at first, it wasn't easy dealing with the police. We'd had, you know, uh, we'd been stopped and detained and unmasked, and we've had guns pulled on us. And it took a while for the police to finally get up to the point where they, you know, liked us and they respected us and they would invite us to their pre-patrol meetings. It took a couple of years, but, um, yeah, now we have a very good relationship with the police. Uh, it's actually to the point now where they just kind of leave us alone and let us do our thing. They don't bother us. They don't stop us. They they know us by name. Do you, do, um, do you give them tips and stuff like that? Like if you, cause I mean, you, I'm sure you can only take some of these, these things to a certain level. 
Well, if we see something that we can't handle or if we think might be a little too dangerous, yeah, we'll go and tell the police. I've had to run to go to the cops before and get their attention because it, sometimes, especially in downtown, it's easier to just run to a cop than it is to try and call 911. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, because the re- response time is terrible. And when I was patrolling with the team also, uh, they had separated um, two guys who were fighting, and the police arrived. And the police officer looked at one of the superheroes, and he said, hey, man, your team is, ge- your team is getting bigger. That's really cool. That was in San Diego. Wow. I wonder, well, you know, the thing is, like, as the as the government start to go bankrupt, like you hear how many little towns in California, little mini cities and shit going bankrupt. I mean, there's going to be no cops. So, I mean, I think you're going to see more and more of this kind of thing. We've had budget cuts in San Diego for stuff like that. Sure. So, so do people, I mean, I'm still filled with so many questions more so than most, most interviews here. This is fascinating. So the, since the, uh, since the whole, well, do people take you seriously? Like, especially in San Diego, it's the Comic Con. I mean, it's the Comic Con capital, isn't it? So, you in the last in the last like five since you've been doing this in 2010, I feel like you know cosplay and this whole thing has just skyrocketed. So here you are doing the real thing with a few select people, but you're in the city where probably you see the most people dressed up as well. So do you blend into that crowd, or do, do people just sort of you know? think that you're you're sort of doing cosplay and you're not serious like how does that whole paradigm work it's a mixed bag it really is um oh some people think that i'm cosplaying some people think that um i'm you know they don't know what to think they think it's halloween or something or that i'm confused and a, a lot of people also get it too they they get you know that i'm a superhero and they know what i'm doing there and and they totally support it and they they think it's great Huh. It, it depends on the city, too. Um, you know, in, in San Diego, some people knew who they were. Some people didn't. Some people knew about real life superheroes and they were screaming, hey, superheroes, you guys are awesome, even though they didn't know who they were specifically. Um, in Seattle, most people know who Phoenix Jones is. Um, you know, in Salt Lake City, a lot of people know who they are. And uh, even police officers stop to take pictures with them. So... <laughs> Yeah, so it depends on where you're going exactly. What about, uh, did, have you ever got hurt, or do you know any other people have got hurt, or, or you know, anything serious? I've gotten a little hurt. I, I once got punched on the shoulder blade uh, trying to break up a situation, and it, I couldn't move my arm for like a week. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't really know anyone who is... Uh, I've gotten seriously hurt doing it. Besides Phoenix Jones, who, uh, you know, he likes to get punched a lot. <laughs> he likes to fight. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he's had a broken nose and a gun drawn on him. He got stabbed. He got shot. Um, yeah, and he, he fought. He's an MMA fighter, so he doesn't, he's not afraid of fighting. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I feel like, so what about, I mean. Firearms, do you carry a firearm or anything like that, or just a stun gun? Just a stun gun, and, but I do carry a very big flashlight, which can double as both a blinding device because it's extremely bright and a, a bludgeoning device if I have to. Huh. So what about like people that are any of you guys like specialize in like, you know, Shaolin monks or like energy work? Or, like do any of you guys have like what some people might not believe is real, like real superpowers out there? I don't think so. Ah. I was hoping for like I was hoping for like a real maybe you can go thing. you can go be the the like what's the guy's name Doctor X or no who drives the the in the X Men he's in the wheelchair and he's the captain Picard Professor X Professor, Professor X Doctor yeah. X he's a, he's a telepath yeah well Graham's kind of telepathic <laughs> he's not very telepathic but I think he'd love to get involved like we've got some people in the chats right now asking how they could get involved. Oh, um, it's easy. You put on a costume and you come up with a name and you just go out and you do something. You go out and just... It's really out. easy. You, know, you got to practice parkour and stuff, don't you? Like, what if you're running across I, rooftops? You got to know how to do the tumbles and the, the running and all that. Like, those would be good you should have some. I would say you should have some sort of skill level. Like, the martial yeah, arts and stuff definitely. like that. Like, you shouldn't just... If you're just, like, 
You're going to get your ass kicked yeah. if you just go if out there. If you think and... if there's beer involved, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> well, there are some people who don't have a lot of fighting experience, but they want to do other things. Like, for example, um, people who study to become paramedics. They will provide first aid. They won't oh. necessarily... Mm-hmm. You'd be the and healers, also, like so. You'd be like the healer superhero out there. But they patrol with a team, and also women will patrol with a team or on their own, but usually with a team. And so, if a woman is the victim of any crime, she'll be the one approaching the woman to make her feel safer than if it's just a bunch of guys approaching her. What a great idea! So you have a well-rounded team. You know, you got your fighters and your healers and your you could be a healer women. I could go over with some Reiki and just calm the situation down. Yeah. You might have like energy workers and stuff. I don't think you stuff. can handle like bleeding and stuff though. No, I can do you that. You just though. become a liability. <laughs> so, so what about when something happens and like who, who decides what is right? And like, how do you, like you gotta, I guess you gotta be careful. That you don't jump into a situation on the wrong side, right? Like if you, if you catch a conflict that uh, has, is halfway in between, like you gotta be careful. That you're not picking sides, right? You can't take sides. You have to be objective and just try and stop the immediate violence or whatever the situation is. You can't necessarily, um, you know, pick sides and then go up and just beat up on the other guy just because the other person says that they're the victim. Exactly, because he's losing the fight. You can't just, you know, go and help the loser out, right? Because they might be the one that started it. Well, you know, I've been in that situation myself. So, I mean, like I said, all you can do is to just stop the immediate threat or whatever it is, and go from there. And like in this particular situation I'm talking about, uh, we, Mr. Extreme and I, and I think one other guy, were walking down the street, and I see this dude being chased across the street from us, and he, he falls, he trips on something, and then the guy who was chasing him starts, you know, stomping on his head. And I go over there, and I hit the dude with my, with my stun gun because this guy was huge. I'm a small dude. I'm only five seven, like 170 pounds, and this dude was easily like six foot something, 250 pounds. He was big, you know, like Spider Man versus Kingpin kind of big. And so I hit him with my stun gun, not you know, just enough to get his attention. And he's like, "What the hell?" I'm like, "Dude, get off of him! Like, back up." And he's like, he started it. I'm like, what did he do? He's like, he, he messed with my girlfriend. I'm like, well, that's no reason to try and kill him. So you could say that the other guy started it, but now he's become the victim. And it's not like he assaulted the other guy. He just messed with his girlfriend or whatever the case was. But this dude, his head was stuck, you know, against the wheel of a car. And this guy was kicking his face in. Yeah, like I mean, it, yeah, and you're just you're really there. You are just intervening then. It's not like you're kicking the shit out of the other guy. You're just trying to, like you said, defuse the situation, right? Yeah, all I did was I hit him in, in the side with my, with my stun gun. He he backed off, and I got him to go away. I de-escalated the situation, and I stopped the, the threat. Hmm. And I didn't have to kick anybody's ass to do it either. What yeah. uh, What's your, like, I'd say, say if you go out 10 nights, I don't know if you're out every night or every other night, but it's, out of 10 nights, how many nights do you, are you having encounters and what's the most popular encounter? Maybe one. And it's usually oh, drunken, good. drunken fights. Yeah. Like even if you go out, like let's say you average only three nights a week, but you go out every single week, you're still probably only going to encounter one or two incidences throughout the whole time. And, and, and some, some nights are busier than others. Some months are busier than others. It always seems like October is the crazy month where she hits the fan every night. Hmm. So it's more yeah. of a, you're not like out, you're less out there investigating crimes and you're more out there for just like general people in trouble disobedience, kind of. you know, like, um, yeah. assaults of, you know, being out there is just an extra set of eyes really watching, you know, I mean, the, the most, the worst time is going to be when the bars close down. Pretty much, yeah, and then that's when the streets literally flood. It's like drunken zombies just all marching along. <laughs> and every once in a while, they'll bump into each other and they'll start a fight. <laughs> that's yeah. really the majority of it. And every once in a while, you might come across a legitimate crime, too, but that's really, really rare. And you have to be in the right place at the right time to find that kind of thing. And if you did find, if you did catch somebody breaking into a car, would you, you know, chase them down and stuff, or...? 
Well, yeah. I mean, uh, even according to, to law, you you ha- you got to do. I mean, you don't have to do something, but that's one of those times where you can't actually make a legitimate citizen's arrest. Right. At least in at least in California, I don't know about other states. Please look into your local laws regarding citizens' arrest. Um, footnote: um, If you see some, if you see somebody committing a felony, you have the right to put, place them in a citizen's arrest. And if you think, if you if you suspected, also if you witness them committing a misdemeanor, it's the same thing. And if you think they committed a felony, or somebody told you they did something, you can do that too. But it has to be a felony. So you have to witness a misdemeanor or a felony, or even just think that they committed a felony. Wow. To respond yeah. to the question also, um, that's the story of many real life superheroes or people who want to be real life superheroes. A lot of them patrol for a very long time before seeing actually something happening. Like Death Head Moth, for example, he's from Virginia, and it took him a month and a half of patrolling alone before seeing actually something happening. And that's why a lot of people who want to become real life superheroes get discouraged very easily. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I was out for about four months before I witnessed my first assault. Four months is a long time to be walking around not knowing if you're actually being effective or not. Yeah. And even San Diego is a pretty big city too. Like in Calgary, you could go half, you could go a year without seeing anything. Yeah, Actually, the well, thing about Calgary, though, is like all the crime would be on like one or two streets. Yeah, it'd be pretty central. Well, no, there's some pretty bad neighborhoods. I'm I mean, I think there's I mean, a lot of crime going on here as well. I don't like a lot think of break, be... car break-ins and stuff like that. Like, if you talk to the cops, there's a lot of, uh, some of the crime is still escalating with, with uh, the way people are stealing cars and all that. And that's also why some real life superheroes get discouraged and they decide to choose to do something else. Like, for example, Life from New York, he wanted to fight crime, but in his area, nothing would happen, which is a good thing, of course. So he decided to help homeless people instead. Oh, ah. so oh, how- that's a good one. That would, that would yeah, that'd be you the way could to do go that here, here for sure. You could do that here for sure. So how, what are some of the ways that he would do that? Getting food for them, um, coats, clothes, toothbrushes, toothpaste, razors, anything they need, really. And I guess if you're in that environment, it'd, it'd probably be pretty easy to, uh, to, to stop some conflicts and actually be a little bit of a superhero as well. I'm sure. Yeah. So is there... A lot of time, homeless are, are victims of crimes themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what about the full moon? I mean, do you make a point to going out on that night? Is that night any crazier than other nights? Not that I've ever noticed. No, I, I can't really say one way or the other whether a full moon has had an impact on, you know, people being uh, assholes more than other nights. Because I thought I heard that from hospitals and from the medical community that uh, that there's more incidents on a full moon. As people get lunacy. Yeah. I heard that too. I think it's a uh, old wise tale. Maybe not though. I don't know if you could say old wise tale anymore. That might be sexist. <laughs> it's an urban legend. Oh, does that a, a, a what legend? An urban legend. There you There's your name. There's your new name. Is there an, already an urban legend out there? <laughs> yeah, a bit of one. Yeah, I thought about changing my name after a few years to that. <laughs> That'll be after you retire. Yeah. yeah. Tell someone. Tell, hopefully, fun. someone's like you. I guess you guys are a team, but is there like, what is the, the rate? Like, do you, do you have people constantly asking you and approaching you and wanting to get involved? Yes. And I usually I discourage it actually. Um, it really takes a certain kind of person to want to go out and do that. And a lot of people, you know, at first they're initially excited and then they realize that it's not everything it's cracked up to be or everything they fantasized it would be. And then they just give up. And I'd probably say the turnaround rate is about 75% of people who jump into it and then they get bored and they walk away. So three out of four people generally give up after like a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Uh, Even after seven years, sometimes it's hard to get out there. Uh, and and, And people go through phases too, you know, where... They uh, get busy with life and they, you know, they get sidetracked by other more important things. And then they just kind of, you know, put being a superhero on the back burner. And it's, 
sometimes it's really sad to see those people go because they were very good at what they did or they just had a really cool persona and personality, so to speak. And sometimes it sucks to see those people go. And other times it's like, um, go away. You know, <laughs> you're just kind of taking up space. <laughs> you're making it worse for us heroes out here. <laughs> you're going to get your yeah, ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's happened before to people. There was a guy out in the UK who got his ass kicked. He got beat up by like four or five guys and he just up and quit just like that. <laughs> like, it, I, I mean, I don't know if I could do the same thing. I don't know if, if I ever got, you know, um, jumped like that, if I would quit. Probably not. But that, you know, it's just like you didn't really, you weren't serious about it to begin with if you're going to let one incident, you know, kind of just put you you know, out for good. Yeah. Yeah. So Nadia, do you want to talk about some other examples of, uh, of the, you know, the people that are out there doing this, uh, that, that we haven't talked about some of the interesting, uh, stories or, um, people out sure. there. Sure. So I met, uh, people from Quebec since I'm from Montreal. I met some people, uh, from Quebec city and from Montreal, the people in Quebec City, unfortunately, didn't patrol for very long. They got discouraged after a while and they just stopped. Um, the people in Montreal, however, they were two guys. One is still patrolling. The other one um, had two babies. So now, you know, he's busy at home, but he still tries to patrol once in a while, help the homeless. And of course, there's Tanatos from Vancouver, who is who I don't know if he still patrols. Urban, do you know if he still patrols? <laughs> Uh, you know, he popped up on Facebook last year and he's been really busy with his family and his, uh, tattooing business. Uh, he's pretty much retired at this point. He's over 65 years old. Mm -hmm. And he was seen like the father of the community, like the model of the community. So I patrolled with him and it was, uh, very enlightening and he taught me a lot of things. Um, and then after that, I also went to Virginia. I uh, went to Seattle, met with Phoenix Jones. I was supposed to patrol uh, with him and his team once, but then uh, he invited me for New Year's Eve, so I went back. The first time I patrolled with him. So we patrolled And this is night. in Seattle, sorry? In Seattle, okay. yes. And... Uh, Nothing really was happening. There were a lot of people um, telling him, you want to fight Phoenix Jones? I can kick your butt. Um, things like that. Others who wanted to take pictures with him. They stopped a few fights and that was it. We were going back to the cars and, you know, go back home in a way. But then a man with a gun followed us and he asked Phoenix Jones's wife, he said, who's the leader? And someone else unfortunately told him. So then he was coming down with the gun and I was with Phoenix Jones and another guy and he was coming toward us. And I was stuck between a wall and a car and he just like walked past me. And he, I don't know, I guess he wanted to shoot us. He followed us. And then Phoenix Jones, you know, and the guy said what, you know, they tried to deescalate, but this guy was really motivated. So he switched, he went on the other side of the street and just followed us everywhere we went. So of course the superheroes, um, called the police and they, you know, Phoenix Jones was saying like, go between buildings to protect yourself and blah, blah, blah. And as the police arrived, he just ran away. And so then I went to San Diego, I went to Oakland, I went to San Francisco, and um, it was nice to patrol, to patrol in San Diego because of the training I received, because the guys were really cool. And, uh, and then, as I said, I went back to Seattle and the shooting happened on New Year's. There was also a man who was holding another, a, a woman against the wall. He wasn't really holding her, but he was putting his arms around her so she couldn't move. And so uh, Phoenix Jones's team said, let's see what happens. Let's stay for a few minutes. And then he started being more aggressive. So they called 911. Um, a few things like that. Did you, so, did you wear a costume or? I did wear a costume. So at first I didn't, but then when I got to Seattle, uh, Phoenix Jones said, you know, you should wear, you should really <laughs> wear a costume so you can feel the way we feel. You can be treated the way we're being treated. Yeah. yeah. And I'm really glad I did because once I had a, a I, I know they hate it when we say costume on. Sorry, Urban. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. About, sorry about you know. that. Yeah. That's uh, what, what should, what should we call it? Like I want to be respectful. I prefer to call it a gimmick. Okay. More than anything. 
Yeah, because uh, uniform isn't right. Uh, costume doesn't really work either because no. our outfits are usually very um, uh, practical and functional. I, I know this doesn't look practical, but it is very functional, and it looks cool, too. Um, so, you know, I've got armor and uh, the hood, which kind of helps obscure the mask a little bit if you're not looking directly at me. Uh, so I prefer to go by gimmick because it's also a theme that your outfit represents, right. too. How about a, how about okay, you know, uh, I've never heard Kit, but sure. I mean, you know, think about like a wrestler's outfit, like Hulk Hogan or, or The Undertaker. You know, The Undertaker has a very specific outfit he wears that gives him that theme, that gimmick. So, you know, like Black Panther, Captain America, they have a gimmick. Their outfit has a theme to them. So that's why I prefer gimmick over uh, costume or even uniform. And yeah. Kit works too, I guess. I just never heard anyone call it that before. But, but a lot of them will call them gear as well. Gear, yeah, I was yeah, thinking gear yeah. as well. Gear kit, yeah. So what was your uh, what was your gear, uh, Nadia? Um, so I went to a store with Phoenix Jones and we bought um, a red mask. And another superhero gave me a red piece of fabric so I could hide uh, the bottom of my face. The rest of it was just black. I had a bulletproof vest. And I had a jacket and black pants and black boots, and that that was about it. Yeah. But it's it was I felt very special when I put it on, because it was as if I had to be the best of myself. Exactly. Yeah. Not not that I'm saying I'm not perfect, but <laughs> I I really had to be like a model. I really had to do everything right, and it seemed like all of my senses were better. I was very alert. I would look everywhere. I would hear more than I usually hear. I was very concentrated. And it was really a rush of adrenaline when you saw something, when I saw something, and we had to act to save someone. It was really, really fun. Um, I, I wouldn't be the one doing it all the time. But it was definitely a great experience. It must it must bring you to the present moment, like you're right there in the moment. You know, you're not you're not daydreaming about whatever. You're like you have to be fully alert. Exactly, you have to be fully alert. And another thing that was surprising is, if I was just myself, you know, walking on the street and I was in the middle of a shooting, I don't know. Maybe I would freak out. Maybe I would panic. I don't know what I would do. But because we were mentally prepared to any situation, everything was under control in our mind. Do you know what I mean? Like we were prepared for that. We were prepared to do whatever it took. It's a little bit like I used to be a photographer for firefighters. I went to firefighting school and it's a bit, a little bit like the same thing in the sense that when you get an alert and you leave the fire station, you are aware of what code it is. So you, you're expecting to see a certain type of event when you get on the scene if you see someone who went through an accident who was in an accident you don't start crying you're really prepared you rush there you do whatever you can to save the person so it's about the same feeling yeah that makes sense yeah so so can we talk a bit more about your costume urban or not sorry geez i said it again your your, your gear your kit your gimmick <laughs> So you've got you've got the hood. So how, so what do you what do you wear on your legs? Do you have padding on your legs? Is it black and red? Like you've got your little um, your bulletproof vest there. Yeah. Um, well, the bulletproof vest would be underneath this. This is really more for like cosmetic and like okay. blunt force trauma type of type of stuff, like punches and baseball bats and things like that. This is actually <laughs> motorcycle vest. Okay. So it can, it can handle a lot of kinetic energy. Okay. Just not a bullet because it's still plastic. Um, but as for like what my legs would wear if I was wearing pants, uh, um, they would be just like black BDU pants. Um, I wear Ninja Tabby shoes, which are like the two toed, like Ninja Turtle style shoes. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. And um, sometimes I wear like these. Um, these um, what do you call those? Uh, catcher's uh, leg armor. So, but you know, uh, sometimes SWAT teams wear similar style shin guards. Um, it's mostly just to prevent people from kicking my shins or scraping them if I'm in a conflict or like if I fall. I've fallen a few times and definitely having uh, appropriate uh, safety gear like elbow, knee pads, shin guards, 
uh, bracers, things like that really help. Um, I wear gloves, which are heavily armored. I know, can you see those okay? Yeah, yeah. Do you have yeah, your stun gun are, handy? Can we see your stun gun? Um, I don't have it with me, no. Um, it's, it's, it's buried in the back with the rest of my gear. Um, I try not to bring it out too much, but um, it's a flashlight that's got a little, it's almost like a cattle prod kind of, but a little smaller. Yeah, nice. it's so... Yeah, um, it, it, it is pretty nice. And I need to get a new one anyway because it's starting to die on me. I've had it, I've had the things for years, and it's seen a lot of wear and tear. Well, do you have, like, um, I was going to actually ask, do you have, like, uh, a utility a, belt? Or no, like um, uh, a donate button or a tip jar? Is there any place our listeners can go to support you, like, financially uh, and maybe donate or anything like that to get you a new no. stun gun? <laughs> no, that's what I have a job for. Um, no, no, I, I, I don't have anything like that set up. Um, I've never really liked the idea of taking donations. I mean, you know, if somebody is on the streets and like, hey, man, I want to give you like five bucks or something, like, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> but I've never set up any kind of PayPal button or anything like that. Um, so uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, but no, there's no place that your viewers could send me a dollar or two. Although that would be nice, but... I'm okay, really. Thank you. Well, we didn't plan on taking donations either, and then expenses started getting getting out of the room. And then we're like, we got to start getting some money for this because it's, it's not going to last. <laughs> oh, someone, in the chat said, yeah. someone in the chats is yelling at me. They're saying, obviously, superheroes don't accept handouts. What? Yeah. Oh. That's right. I you're guess not, it, would, not it would defeat this. the purpose if you had a pay- PayPal button, I guess. I don't know. I don't think so. This is new, new, I don't know. I don't see why. You gotta find him. No, it's not it's a superhero. You gotta go buy him lunch or something. Yeah, exactly. That's how you do it. Yeah. They do spend yeah. a lot of money. They do spend a lot of money on their gear. And Phoenix Jones even went mean. to the bank to get a loan for his uh, his first gear, he, second gear. He did what alone? He went loan. to get a loan. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See. So you could be calf man. It's so perfect. <laughs> we just gotta wow. get you out there. <laughs> Well, actually, I found the gas mask and this at a thrift store, and they cost me less than 50 bucks for both of those things. And I got this from China for like eight bucks. So, and this thing from China, to the gloves too from China. So, I use the Wish app a lot to buy a lot of my gear because it's cheap. But, um, yeah, I, I got to say, over the years, I've probably spent a few thousand dollars on all my gear and pepper sprays. And stun guns aren't cheap, that's for sure. And if you do buy them cheap, then you're getting the wrong kind. Neither is time, right? Neither is time. Time is expensive, too. Especially if you have, do you have, are you married? Yeah. So, yeah, that's like your wife time. Take time away from your wife. Well, no, because she's a superhero, too. Oh, perfect. No, there you go. Like, match yeah. made. Did you meet on the streets, or did you get into that I'm, together? Yeah, I'm excited now. We met, we met through the Extreme Justice League, actually. She got involved with our homeless outreach program, and, you know, I just kind of went from there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, she's really good with homeless outreach. She uses a lot of extreme couponing techniques <laughs> to get a lot of the homeless outreach stuff where either pennies on the dollar or free. So we've almost never paid for soap or razors or anything like that. That's good. So Nadia, are you planning on doing anything else with the superheroes and and traveling around and continuing on this at all? Or no, no. It, it's it was a great experience, but uh, now I need to move to a different topic. <laughs> yeah, like rock and roll. We actually had a, another thing in the chats here was asking if you've had any additional issues with like Antifa running around now. Is oh, that, that's is that a, a good thing question. In San Diego? Actually, yeah. Not down here, um, but Antifa is definitely big up in, um, you know, uh, Seattle. Yeah. Like and, just... uh, the, the, the black, black protesters, they're big up there. So that's, that's kind of like almost an exclusive Seattle thing. We don't really have that problem down here. San Diego don't put up with that shit. <laughs> There's a soundbite for the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Got a timestamp? It's at 45 minutes. Yeah, perfect. That's right. <laughs> I should write that down. Although last year, um, during the, uh, the we, I went to a Donald Trump rally uh, just to see what it was going to be like. Uh, and unfortunately, I missed the Bernie Sanders rally. I would have gone to that one, too. Um, but there were protesters that showed up, and they brought up the SWAT team. And it did not get very far. 
I guess that we do not tolerate that kind of stuff. They had like 30 people arrested before it even got started. Wow. Good to hear. Right. Yeah, I saw them bust out with their, their rubber shot, uh, rubber gun, uh, pellet guns, and, and they had paintball guns filled with pepper spray, and they had the big riots, both staffs, and they, they were not joking around. It's funny, because yeah. you don't hear that side of it in the media, really. I, you know, you hear the other, I don't know, I don't have of... cable or news or anything, yeah. so I don't know if there's ever any, yeah. any, um, huh. where was your story, Nadia? Sorry if you mentioned it already, I missed it. I'm sorry about you, the story you did on this on the superheroes. Where was what was that for? Was that just for a uh, website or was the that book. for uh, oh, for the book? Oh, no. right. Yeah. It, so, no, it was for a magazine. So I was uh, writing a lot of articles for magazines. Um, and then after writing so many articles, you know, I decided to write a book just like the book on serial killers. And um, yeah. So how did how did your other your previous work like the the serial killer learning about the criminology of that and the bounty hunters. How did that play into this whole, this whole thing with secret agents? There seems to be a theme there, like this whole underground criminology and, and crime fighting. Yes. I really like challenges. So interviewing serial killers were, was obviously a big challenge and, you know, understanding more about the psychology behind it and everything. And, um, with the bounty hunters, it was really fun. I went to California with them and we had a lot of, uh, we had a great time. It was fun, like discovering what they were doing, um, discovering what equipment they were using and things like that. It was great. So yes, I like, I like challenges. I like to interview people that we don't necessarily hear about a lot, like, you know, special agents and all that. Um, yeah. And superheroes were, were just about the same. You know, I, I heard about them in the news, but it was still not necessarily um, a topic that everyone was aware of. Yeah, I totally get that. That's why we do the podcast. We get to talk to people that, you know, you don't normally hear from and that have interesting and different views. It's a blast. So, so, um, Nadia, the, uh, what, what, what do you got coming up then? What's your work like, uh, coming up with your interviewing musicians and stuff like that? Yeah, right now I'm interviewing uh, musicians, heavy metal musicians. So I uh, recently interviewed the singer of Megadeth, um, a guy from Anthrax, Motorhead, uh, the drummer of Def Leppard. So that's what I'm working on right now. I also interviewed a, an ex-skinhead who talks against racism and has a foundation to help people getting out of there. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Nice. Wow. And uh, Urban, who is your... Uh... Would you mind, like, who's your, your, uh, your, your, like, your, crew, your league? Well, that's a good question. My, too. my, my team? <laughs> yeah, like, who's your uh, team? Can you, can you rattle off the names of, you mentioned your wife, but could you give us uh, the rundown of your team members? Yeah, I've got a few people. I'm extremely picky about who I have on my team. Um, I've got myself, obviously. Uh, I've got my wife, uh, Sheer. She's a, a certified EMT. Um, I've got, uh, my right hand man, who is really my partner, uh, Ombre Obscuro. He's been in the security industry for about 20 years. Oh. And I have uh, a fellow named Red Diamond, who is a, a licensed private investigator. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. So we all bring a little something to the table. Um, it's, it's very nice to have people with skill sets that you can be proud of and, and, you know, really, uh, you know, just, you know, these are people that you can rely on and they have skills and they, they have something to bring to the table. And, uh, I think that's about it. I think that's all of us. Yeah. Like I said, I'm really picky. So if somebody comes along and they ask, can I be on the team? I'm most likely going to say no, unless I know what they're about. Yeah. What's your wife's uh, hero name? Sheer. Sheer. Yeah. S H E E R. Nice. Yeah. And, and did you, did you, uh, Nadia, did you have your hero name as well that night? No, I did not. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't go that far, right? Eh? No. <laughs> we had a guy, we had a guest on who is, who does classes in avatarism, like any, he, and he kind of gets people into picking their avatar and then creating like what you kind of what you guys have done, but not necessarily in a superhero format, but just for, 
for like festivals and stuff like that. And it, it's really interesting to, to try and get out of your yourself and into like who you would want to be. Right. And then you guys mentioned like, you know, when you dress up like that and go out there, you, you become your best self. Yeah. yeah. If you could pick a name, what would it be? Do I get to pick grounds? Name or my name? <laughs> <laughs> How about I, let's do both. You could pick a name for me and a name for you. I don't know. I don't you know. I can't, I can't do it on, I can't do it live like this. I don't know. Okay. Well for Graham, his nickname would be calf man or his superhero <laughs> name would be calf man. And my superhero name would be dark thunder. <laughs> dark. dark thunder. Right? What about you, Nadia? I really don't know. I'd have to think about it. Okay. Fair enough. It I'm took like, me like a month to come up with my name. I'm like Nadia. I can't, I can't just come up with another cuff like that. But I just I just made a D and D character and I had I gave him five names so I could be one of those names maybe like Granos that's my that's my yeah. character's name so well uh, is there anything else you guys want to mention before we start wrapping it up um, Urban is there what? anything you want to say actually since we were just talking about names yeah um, that's probably one of the hardest challenges people have when coming up with their persona is trying to come up with. Uh, a good name. A lot of people come up with really stupid names like Shadow Guy and 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 Dark Dude, Dark Thunder. And, and, <laughs> so and, someone and, put White Feather for me in there. <laughs> you know, and they just it, it seems like like they just like um click like one of those random name generators on the internet, or they pick two two names out of a hat or something like a you have a descriptor and a, and a noun. You know, and then it's like, who comes up with these names? Like, I, you know, I don't, I don't think Urban Avenger is necessarily the, the greatest name, although I like it. And um, but no one's ever been able to, you know. Actually, no, I'll put it to you this way: a lot of people have tried to copy me. So they've been like Urban Ninja, they've been like Urban Warrior, and and and, and you know something Avenger, and then yeah, it's like. Well, yours, the name is really hard apparently. well, yours is very descriptive too. It tells you what, you know, you're avenging the urban landscape, you know, you're oh, I love urban it. it's avenger. Great. The it's, name it's and perfect. The, the name yeah. and the gas mask and the, it's great. <clears throat> I figured out what I'd be. I had a name come to me in meditation once and it was Guan, Guan the protector. Guan the protector. Guan. So I would, that's maybe what, what I would have to be. Like if that came to me. Yeah, Guan. Yeah. I looked it up and it's really kind of a weird meaning and stuff, but that's, I'd probably have to do that. Yeah. That's better than White Feather. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nadia, what we about... actually had someone in the chat say that they're going to be your, uh, they're going to be your nemesis. My nemesis? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, <laughs> challenge accepted. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Right on. Nadia, is there anything else you, you think uh, you want to say before we wrap it up? Uh, sure. Actually, there's something else that's pretty interesting. Um, there are also the real life supervillains. Oh, oh, geez. Yeah, that's a good point. So they are not people who commit crime or anything like that. It's very different than in comic books or movies. They are mainly people, mainly because there are some exceptions, but there are mainly people who stay behind the computer and watch real life superheroes and make videos about those who they believe are not real or if they see that a superhero um, made a big mistake something that shouldn't be done again they're going to make videos about it they're going to make chats about it they're going to they're going to be pretty much everywhere and uh, accountability like real life trolls yes yeah but real life superheroes at the beginning i noticed that they didn't really like them but now at, at least when i stop you know being chatting with the community, I saw that most of them really like them, but only real, real life superheroes like, like the real life super villains. I don't understand. It's a nemesis. It fills is, a void. I think it, it fills a void. Is that what you mean? Like they like them because of the conflict or something like that, or because of the challenge? The notoriety no, too. They, they like them because like I said earlier, a lot of people want to become real life superheroes, but they're not necessarily real. For example, I was chatting with one and he was always on Facebook and he would say, I'm going to go patrolling. And then five minutes later, he was back. So this is not a real, real life superhero. So the supervillains are there to, to see who's real and who's oh. not. And to get those who are not out of the community. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. I get it. I get it. Oh, wow. That's interesting. 
See, that's a role you could fill. No, no. It's non-violent, non-confrontational. No, no, I can't you sit just, behind like, the creep computer. around in your car, watching the scene. <laughs> it's perfect for you. I'll call you the creeper. <laughs> um, One of my favorite supervillains ever was the Golden Dawn. Oh, that's perfect. Very well. That's perfect. Eh? Is that James Bond? He's the, the occultist, the Golden Dawn, yeah. I liked, uh, <laughs> who's the guy with the... Uh, with the metal teeth, but but are but are there also like you know Jaws, are yeah. there also people though that would be, you know, would be the the opposite side of you guys and dressing up and and actually being um being evil out there? Like why? I mean, why wouldn't there be the the yin to that yang there? Oh, there are people like that. Sure, they wear like Spider Man masks and go rob a liquor store. There was that whole clown craze about a year ago. Remember that clowns. Yeah, clowns. Yeah, there we people go. People were dressing up as clowns and they were scaring people. They were just, you know, being creepy and, and sort of terrorizing people. And you don't remember that last year? Yeah, like, yeah, I do. That's what thing. I want to see. I want to yeah. see the a fucking superhero run down and beat up one of them creepy clowns creeping people. Yeah, because because for some reason people are freaked out about clowns. I know some people it's personally that. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it must be that. Really, I don't know. They, a Richard Nixon mask too. I always see that one. Right? Well, that's, that's from that's from, one. that's from Point Break. That's why I think. Yeah. Isn't it from Heat? I'm thinking Heat. Yeah. It's a popular one. Yeah. We should get a Richard Nixon mask for the studio. Uh, before we wrap up, is there anything else you guys wanted to say or plug or where our listeners can track you down or follow you or anything like that? Where the Facebook page? Sorry, no, go ahead. No yeah. more. <laughs> There's my book out there called Real Life Superheroes. Absolutely. Is that be- do you have a website we can buy that from instead of Amazon or do you per- is there a preferred method? No, it's pretty much in all the main stores, bookstores, Walmart, Target, um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's available everywhere. Nice. And you do have a website as well, right? I do. I do. I would have to spell it out, but it's Nadia, N-A-D-I-A, Fidzani, F as in Frank, E-Z-Z-A-N-I.com. Awesome. I like and, that you said Zed. And I'll, uh, I'll link to all that in the show notes as well. I'm Canadian too, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Our American listeners, Z is Z. Z. <laughs> Which is most. Most of our listeners are in the States. Yeah. Did you want to go next, uh, Urban? Oh, yeah, I just have a, a Facebook page and a Twitter if you want to follow me on Twitter. I'm going to follow you right now. <laughs> okay, what's it? What is it? Um, I believe the Twitter is UA underscore RLSH. And if you just search Urban Avenger Real Life Superhero on Facebook, it'll pop up and you can give that a like. Right, perfect. It was UA oh, yeah, underscore I- what? <laughs> Sorry. A underscore LOSH, I think. R-O-S-H. Oh, R-O-S-H. We have superhero. Yeah. Oh, I, forgot, I, I did got you. Yeah. I got you. on Facebook. I forgot about it. Nice. I'm going to plug it. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, what were you going to say, Nadia? Too. I was saying I also have a public page on Facebook. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Right on, guys. Well, yeah, this has been a fantastic chat. It's been great to meet you guys, and and uh, we really appreciate you guys both coming on to talk about it. It's really added a good dynamic to the to the interview. Absolutely, yeah. Powered all the real life superheroes. Up yeah, there. yeah. I think it's a fantastic thing you guys are doing. I really do. It's, it gives me a better a better um, <clears throat> cha- a better view of it. Like talking to you in person and really getting your your the genuineness of it, and that you're not just out there faking it. Like I really yeah. do. I didn't realize there's so many people out there doing it, but yeah, I think it's good. You know, we need a little army of Grimericans bringing little lunches for homeless people. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you for having us. It was great. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah thank thanks. You. Okay. Have a wonderful time. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, 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 take care. Yeah. Be safe Be safe out be there, safe Urban. Be safe out there, absolutely, yeah. yeah, and good luck. Thank you very much, you guys. You guys have a good night. Thanks. Okay, bye, bye Nadia. Bye. Bye, Nadia. Bye. Talk soon. Okay. And that was our chat with, oh my God, I got to shut off the video here. Here, I'll go like this. Ow. There you go. I don't know what that did. It probably just froze anything. Anyway, that was our chat with uh, Nadia and the Urban Avenger. What'd you guys think? I'm inspired. That was a good one, eh? I'm inspired, yeah. Are you going to do it? Um, 
I don't know. I was thinking, I'm seriously, you know, what was it was going through my mind, wondering, uh, wondering what it would be like. Was it? Hey, well, didn't you think about that? What it'd be like? No, man. Come on. I can't do it. No, I could be like the. I could maybe I could I could be like your. I wouldn't be the fighter. Yeah, you got to be the fighter. No, I wouldn't be the fighter. I'm not going up. I got the kids, man. I'm too yeah. short to be a fighter. I'd be looking up at all the the villains. I'd be like punch him in the belly. I'd just be waiting, Bam! just helping people. I'd I'd try and just like just uh, what do you call it? Distill the situation. Yeah, I could see that. I could, I don't think you could do it. I don't think you could do it. No. I'd like to go along a couple times, maybe. I would, that would be just fun. Just hide in the shadows. That would be fun. Watch things. Hide in the shadows? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that could be your superhero name. You just go around hiding in the shadows. That's I think perfect. the shadows are already taken. Is you it? can't just copy a real, like, uh, like a no, Hollywood you can't superhero. Do it. No, you could just copy. You could no, just, you can't you could, I could watch. I couldn't do it. Maybe I could be the guy that listens with the police scanner and, like, Tells you where to head. Yeah, you're the good dog. You're the, you got the home base. What are you? You're the dispatch. The I'm super dispatch. Dispatch. <laughs> Superhero dispatch. Perfect. That's that's the job for me. All right, guys. Uh, check out Good America. Uh, big thanks. Like I said, big thanks to Urban and Nadia for coming on the show. Uh, check out their stuff. Check out goodamerica.ca slash support for all the different ways you can help us keep having these... Um, Fascinating conversations. Yeah, these fascinating, and inspiring, too. inspiring, uninterrupted chats. No ads. No bullshit. Coming at you, heavy. Couple of week lately. So check out the site, uh, support page. Sign up for a monthly today. If you can't, maybe you can do a one time. If you can't do that, share the show, review the show, tell your friends about the show. Sign up for the newsletter. Sign other people up for the newsletter. <laughs> and uh, I don't know whatever else Graham has in the show notes. Save some people. And yeah. Be a superhero. Thanks for listening. <laughs> and we will see you next week. The Zen Zone. That's not really a rhyme, but it's New Year's resolution time. Don't be in such a rush. Stargaze whenever possible. Be more punctual. Be more grateful for the little things. Drink more water. New Year's resolutions. Save more money. New Year's resolutions. Clean behind your ears more often. Visit with some senior citizens. New Year's resolutions. Buy more local goods. Eat less pizza. Eat more pizza. New Year's resolutions. Quit drinking booze. Or at least, drink more in moderation. Smile a lot. Don't be so wasteful. Meditate more. Find good qualities in those you dislike. Play like a child would. Don't take yourself so seriously. Walk somewhere instead of driving. Be more organized. Volunteer at a hospital. New Year's resolutions. Be more confident. Strive for peaceful resolutions. New Year's resolutions. Be a good role model. Use cuss words less. Keep your promises. Read more books about love. Read more books. Eat dinner by candlelight. New Year's resolutions. Don't waste water. Bike to work more, if possible. Love your body more. Pick flowers for a person you admire and present them to them. Smell flowers more. Take deep breaths more. Loosen up. New Year's resolutions. His resolution. Ain't nobody got time for those. Be awesome. Continue being the best husband to my wife. Be more punctual. Focus more on mental fortitude. The Zen Zone. New Year's resolutions. Pursue inner peace and positive living. New Year's resolutions. Get back into flow states via snowboarding. I miss it. New Year's resolutions. Always give my best. New Year's resolutions. Work hard, play hard. New Year's
Year's resolutions, New Year's resolutions, New Year's resolutions, and hug for 33 seconds for a stronger bond. New Year's resolutions. Get in shape. Start eating healthier food and less food overall. Stop procrastinating. Improve your concentration and mental skills. Meet new people. Become more active. Be more confident. Take some chances. Earn more money. Become more polite. Reduce stress. Learn to be happier with my life. Get more quality sleep. Get more quality sleep. Get more quality sleep. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. Read more books. Read to school children. New Year's resolutions. Help clean your neighborhood. Watch less TV. Find a pen pal to write. Call and talk to someone on the phone. New Year's resolutions. Chew your food more thoroughly. New Year's, New Year's, New Year's. Teach your kids wisdom. Don't complain so much. New Year's, New Year's, New Year's. Don't yell at your kids so much. Resolutions, resolutions. Donate to a podcast you enjoy. Hint, hint. Resolutions, resolutions. Compliment friends and family more. New Year's resolutions. Don't be in such a rush. Thank a stranger for something. Dance the electric boogaloo. Fix something. Do more DIY projects. Blow bubbles in your chocolate milk whenever possible. Learn self-defense. Join a club. Donate to a charity. Spend less frivolously. Quit taking selfies. Resolutions. Get off social media. Make some offline friends. Talk to your neighbor. Resolutions. Help your spouse around the house. Be less angry. Pet an animal whenever you can. Go to the lake and meditate. Learn a new musical instrument. New Year's resolutions. 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 Follow the white rabbit. Follow the white rabbit. Follow the white rabbit. Follow. Follow the white rabbit. The white rabbit. Follow the white rabbit. Follow the white rabbit. Follow the white. Follow the white rabbit. 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 New Year's resolutions. 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 Follow the white rabbit. Follow the white rabbit. Follow the white rabbit. Follow the white rabbit. New Year's resolutions. 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 Follow the white rabbit. 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 Follow the white rabbit.
White Rabbit. Ain't nobody got time for those. Be awesome. Continue being the best husband to my wife. Be more punctual. Focus more on mental fortitude. The Zen light zone. New Year's resolutions. Pursue inner peace and positive living. New Year's, New Year's resolutions. Get back into flow states via snowboarding. I miss it. New Year's resolutions. Always give my best New Year's resolutions. Work hard, play hard. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. And hug for 33 seconds for a stronger bond. Thank a stranger for something. Dance the electric boogaloo. Fix something. Do more DIY projects. Blow bubbles in your chocolate milk whenever possible. Learn self-defense. Join a club. Donate to a charity. New Year's. Spend less frivolously. Quit taking selfies. Get off social media. Make some offline friends. New Year's. Talk to your neighbor. New Year's. Help your spouse around the house. New Year's Pet an animal whenever New Year's you can. Go to the lake and meditate. Learn a new musical instrument. Follow the white rabbit. New Year's Be more confident. Resolutions. Strive for peaceful resolutions. Resolutions. Be a good role model. New Year's. Use cuss words less. Resolutions. Keep your promises. Read more books about love. Do Zen. So. Read more books. Eat dinner by candlelight. Resolutions. Don't waste water. Do Zen. So. Like to work more if possible. Resolutions. Love your body more. For a person you admire and present them to them. To send so. Smell flowers more. Take deep breaths more. Loosen up. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. To Zen. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. To Zen. Zone. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. To Zen. New Year's resolutions. Don't be in such a rush. Stargaze whenever possible. Be more punctual. Resolutions. Be more grateful for the little things. New Year's. Drink more water. Save more money. New Year's. Clean behind your ears more often. New Year's. Visit with some senior citizens. New Year's. Buy more local goods. Eat less pizza. Eat more pizza. Eat more pizza. Eat more pizza. Eat more pizza. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. Follow the white rabbit. Follow. The Zen Zone.
the Zen zone, the Zen zone. The Zen Zone. That's not really a rhyme, but it's New Year's resolution time. If Maria supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> America's first. Blah, blah, blah. The blah, blah, blah. Sending out good vibes. Blah, blah, blah. Good vibes. Blah, blah, blah. Good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes. Modern need breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. If more you supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> <America's last support. laughs> Thank you.